in the script, we actually, you know, we had written that there was a horse race actually shown, you know, and then after we, once we started shooting, we realized that we didn't have the money to shoot an actual race. You know, how are we going to go to, you know, we didn't know where we'd go, how we do it. So that, that whole f final sequence of the camera moving very slowly into him was something that we came up by necessity because we couldn't cut away. And in, in doing that, I realized that it was, boy, it was much more interesting anyway to be on his face and to watch someone watching a race as opposed to watching the race um, and hearing the race in the background. So sound design was very important. Um, Vinny Pastor, the guy who plays the big thumb breaker, who's like been in so many movies since then, he's actually been in two of my movies since we did the bet and we've remained friends. He walked into my casting session dressed like you see him in the movie. He's got, I believe, that orange shirt on and like this whole suit and he was sipping a McDonald's cup and he walked in, he's like, all right, who's the director in here? You? You're the director in here? All right, what's my lines? You got my lines? Come on, let me do the lines right now. All right, who, where are we going right now? And like, oh, and we, and I was reading with him. I'm like, uh, yeah, I don't have the money. You don't have the money, I'm gonna break your thumb. I'm gonna break everything, I'm gonna do everything. I'm like, all right, good, all right, you got the part, man. Uh, yeah, fine, great. He goes, all right, thanks a lot, see you later. And left, and I was like, oh man. I got lucky enough to interview at MTV uh, in 1986 when they were um, just really getting going and really becoming very popular and they're looking for a lot of, um, you know, lower level help and uh, that was me. And uh, so I started working as a production assistant at MTV and ended up staying there for about five years. And um, I learned it was really my film schools. I didn't go to school to be a film director. I was constantly looking around for something to shoot and, and direct. And um, Gavin O'Connor, um, a friend of mine at the time, uh, had, was trying to do the same thing as a writer. He was he was um, really trying to break in to the business and, and do something. And you know, when you're a young guy or girl trying to break in, it's a catch-22 because you don't get an opportunity unless you've done something. But how do you get the how do you do something if you don't get the opportunity? So we decided to make the opportunity for ourselves. Now, granted, I was just a production assistant, gone to associate producer, gone to producer at a cable network, um, but I, I still had yeah no I still had a lot of a lot of growth and I didn't really know that much about film to be honest with you. I didn't really know. Um, I'd been a lot on a lot of sets, but I hadn't. I didn't know what I was doing, so I knew that I wanted to do it. And I wanted to try it. So we uh, we did the bet, and we we did it because we we wanted to get better jobs. <laughs> Basically, you know, we wanted to get in on the bet. It was the ultimate learning experience because it was the first time that I was actually making a movie, and it was that point after making that film that I knew that that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, and it got me really excited to do anything I could to keep working. Well, I mean, I think, you know, look, no matter what you do in life, if you have some sort of in, you know, on any level, you know, in this case, I happen to have a, an Academy Award winning uncle in the same profession that I'm in. Um, at some point, you're gonna either be a hoax or you're gonna have talent, you know, and I've, I've made five movies so far, and I'm, I'm hoping that, that I've been able to prove myself on my own merits and you know Jonathan is not only one of my closest friends but he's like I said before he's a confidant and it's like if you're lucky enough to have an advisor in anything you do you know whether it be filmmaking or you know any other business that you would do if you have someone that has experience in your field and they're available to you all the time to give you advice then you've got a leg up on everyone else and just doing it I mean I've learned all my good lessons and continue to learn all my good lessons by doing and failing or doing and succeeding. But the common thread is doing. You just have to do it. You know, whether it's your your own Bolex or your own Super 8 or you raise the money and get a 16 or you, you raise the money and steal a 35 or it's videotape or whatever it is, just do it because um, you can't read it in a book and you can't learn it by watching films. You have to really get in the trenches and, and teach yourself how to do it and, and learn from others. That's it for Shortcuts tonight. Thanks for watching, and uh, make sure to visit our website at www.shortcuts.org. Good night.
Shortcuts is sponsored in part by Kodak, the filmmaker's filmmaker, proud supporter of independent film. Also by LondonShirts.com, the shirt outlet on the internet, bringing factory direct value to your desktop.